boys, episode 63 of the Motorsport Republican podcast. Welcome. Hey, What's going on, boys? What's Pro- going on? Probably one of the most anticipated pods for a long time. Probably, actually, probably ever. Ever, because we have some huge breaking news on MotoGP. Obviously, we had an a awesome race with F1 Canada last night, so... Yeah, super excited to get into it. Well, it was good to finally have a good Formula One race for once. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. We just missed out on the big news last week for the pod, and we've been having we've been inundated with messages all week. Inundated, we? inundated. People, people just want the want the inside word from the the MR team. So and our we, opinions, we are going to give it to them. Um, as always, we are proudly supported by MJ Trading Cards, started by a great mate of ours, Mitch. Uh, guys, get get on board. Simple as that. That's all right. MJTradingCards.com.au Biggest sports breaking card business in Australia. Use 15% off for your first order, MSR15. Just great community. MSR15? MSR15. I like it. It's just a great community. Just jump on board, guys, if you're into that kind of thing. And if you want to start out, you know, with a couple of packs here and there, you might you might score a, a very rare card and be a rich man overnight. That's so. it. Might get a bit lucky, eh? That's right. Yeah, that's it. So we are going to jump into MotoGP first tonight because there's such ba- this is such big news. It's and, massive, and we just have to um, we just got to you know take it apart and talk about it. And it was a bit of a surprise for all of us. It was such big news that Daniel had to fly two states away and have a holiday <laughs> just to recover from all the news. It was, it was, um, it <laughs> yeah. was massive news. You're as tanned as Jorge Martin now, I reckon. Yeah, finally I had his uh, skill on a bike and uh, <laughs> probably the money that he's getting with his new contract. <laughs> So let's go through it, boys. So the breaking news first was Martin to Factory Aprilia. Yeah, which was about three hours after we filmed our pod. Legitimately. Um, and then that was very unlucky for us. But then mm. obviously Marquez and signed, what, two, three days later? Two days later. Two days later to yeah. Factory Ducati, which is wild. I think the biggest thing is if someone said to us, you know, even a week ago, a couple of weeks ago, that Jorge Martin was going to sign to Aprilia, we're like, nah, no, no, no way. No. Yeah, it's um, and it seems to be Bastianini signed with KDM, but no official announcement just yet. Correct. Yeah, with um, Tech Three, Tech which three. Are, we're moving away from ga- gas, 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 back to a, an orange bike. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. What do you know why that is? I'm not sure. To yeah. be honest, the only thing I w- was speaking to someone about is it could be that the bike's good, and they want KDM at the forefront, not mm. Gas Gas beating a KDM. Yeah. So mm. either way that. They're sort of winning. Interesting with the KDM, yeah. but I could I could be totally wrong. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's just an assumption. Makes sense. Uh, Daniel, we spoke briefly before the pod on this sort of not rumor, but how the whole contract came about with Marquez, and it sounded like Martin actually signed a contract with with Factory Ducati. Yeah, so I've got it up here, um, and I don't know this. It was the first I'm hearing about this. So he had signed, mm. uh, but there was a clause that if Marquez had won this year's championship. The decision is reversed. Wow. Marquez oh, what? gets the seat over him. That's such a rude clause, though. That's so rude. And, and, and to leave it to like it could leave it to the last round yeah, as well. That's yeah. the other thing. One hundred percent. That's so uncertain, and everyone else has got to make their decisions and have their. Yeah, where would Jorge ready? Martin go then if he loses his seat straight away? Stay on Prime again. Yeah, you know what the other thing is? That confirms last year's rumour of if Martin won the championship, mm. he would have gone straight to that factory Ducati. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, they had his suit there no, ready. Had, yeah. yeah, I was going to say yeah. they had his leathers ready to go. I, 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 feel, I feel for Jorge Martin because I feel like this whole thing has just been rough on him when yeah. he realistically couldn't have done any more. You could see in that photo he just looked... Like, so disappointed that mm. he wasn't wearing the factory red. Yeah. I'm all for it. I think you and I had picked him for yeah. Aprilia Tom. So Standard. It's still a shock, though. Even yeah. though it is. I had said that, I was like, nah, this this dude's got to have the factory Chicati seat. It makes the most sense. I, know, and I think we all agreed on last week's pod that that's what <laughs> was happening. We're like, <laughs> and he's probably signed while we were talking yeah, about it. Like. Yeah. Um, now, back to that rumour. I heard that actually Marquez blocked that. Um, blocked that contract, so that was the, that was the um, that was the rumor that I heard that Martin signed with Ducati a clause with Marquez if he win the championship, and Marquez said no, that's not what I want. Um, let's have a look. What I've got here. Uh, we need thinking music. <laughs> oh yeah, Martin accepted the terms, but Marquez did not. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. So, so that's yeah. really, really interesting that obviously the power of Marquez, I mean, how much does that show? And then they they obviously would have panicked as well when he said, well, Primax not an option. Yeah, that's right. 
He, he, I, I um, think he's a really. It seems like he's a really smart negotiator and uses the media to his advantage. Played the Trump card. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. And then the photo he put up with the uh, factory pilot, yeah. the Oakley factory pilot yeah. shirt, that was well played. <laughs> that was very was well like, played. You know what? Fair, fair game. Um, uh, but Marquez it, deserves it. I mean, I know, I know, Martin. We say Martin. They, they both deserve it. They both deserve it. I mean, Marquez is a, one in one in a gen, once in a generation rider, and he's never had a chance of riding on that team. And I think it's an exciting prospect anyway. It's if 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 it's for us as people that want to create, I guess, content out of it. Oh, it's amazing. There's the Liberty Media and Mark Marquez riding for the factory Ducati probably is the two biggest <laughs> things you could get. And, um, and Bagnaia and Marquez, not the best of friends either. That's yeah, the other yeah. aspect of that. Yeah, true. But uh, but with Bagnaia, it seems like he's taken it all. Kudos to him, like in his stride. I don't really think he cares. He doesn't. I, don't I, think, so. I think he's back doesn't himself show in. a lot of emotion, I suppose. No. Well, exactly that. Mm. And at the end of the day, he's an employee anyway. Yeah. So whether he likes it or not, it's up to management's right. decision and he's got to live with it. So, so I want to know, boys, I want to know, this is Marquez's decision, especially if you, Daniel, you, I want your bias thoughts on it, your ultimate bias <laughs> thoughts, and then your non-bias thoughts about what will happen. Next year? <laughs> yeah. And just just for this whole situation. I, I know where you're going to come from, but Marquez <laughs> is going to win the championship next year. Okay. He has to. And if he doesn't, it's his re- reputation ruined forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You hear that? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Clip that, Curdy. <laughs> Sexy boy. <laughs> Look, my biggest thing is everyone was like, oh, no, nah, Marquez is on a Ducati this year. He's going to come out. He's going to smash everyone. He hasn't won a race yet. Yeah. Like, Martin's proven himself. Time and time again last year, this year. Yes, I get it. He's an eight-time world champion. He can bring a lot to the team. From a bias point of view, I don't want him on that bike. Mm. Not at all. I don't think that just, for me, it doesn't sit right. Yeah, like, of course. Uh, good it's going to look strange, isn't good, it? Good oh, friend yeah. of the pod, Lukey Luke, sent me a text message straight away and we were uh, <laughs> cursing, <laughs> cursing the decision. But um, non-bias, it would be a good battle. Yeah. But I'd, I truly believe he will not win the championship. Mm. Mm. And if he was coming onto this bike that's a championship winning bike, the 23 spec that he's on, he still hasn't won yet. Like, how. I think the GOAT debate's over as well. Because mm. Rossi went to a bike that was dog shit and won him a championship and bought him up to glory. Mm. Mark has on a proof bike, hasn't won a race. I think I, I, I like what you're saying, but I think it's 20 years is a long time. It's 20 years and it's changed. As it has. In, the field's probably more stuck now. No, yes, but I think as in um, it's almost more rider than – it's all, sorry, it's more bike than rider these days. As in like you look at Bezeki's results, Marquez's results, like it's it's – if you're not on the GP24, you're not winning a championship. Bez is nowhere, but I wouldn't yeah. even bring him in. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. But I just think, yeah, it's a it's a GP24 or it's nothing. We, we, it's, it's a long season. We could all be eating our words and Marquez could yeah. still win, a, win races oh, and then look, win a title. It, there's no doubt he'll win a race. He's got to win a race. But yeah. I honestly thought it would have happened by now and it hasn't. Yeah, yeah same. Um, but like I said, non-biased, I think it'll be a great season. It's going to be awesome for the sport. Oh, yeah. It's going to bring so much more eyes. And Liberty Media takes over what year again? Sorry, oh, I thought it was next year. Yeah, I thought it, it was next year. It as well. is isn't yeah. It? Yeah. one year before the rule. Two years before the rule changes. It's perfect timing for them. Mm, yeah. So they'll make this come out amazing. Hopefully, a Netflix series, and then yeah, you'll get all the teeny boppers following MotoGP. <laughs> yeah, but from from from, a, uh, from that point of view, yeah, yes, it's good for the sport. What, what it's going to do for him and his sponsors, though, that'll be strange because you think he's Red Bull. Oakley. Yeah, it's a lot of different ones. There, Monster, yeah, Monster, yeah. Carrera. Samsung, Lenovo. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of... The six, the six different, yeah. as we spoke about and on the pod with um, number one, Daniel's mate, Danby. <laughs> but it's, it's going to be interesting and I think it's exciting for us. And like I think the other thing is it's exciting for uh, Martin as well to go to a whole different team. They're going yeah. to build a team around him as well where he would have always been second fiddle to Bagnaia going into next year. Yeah. 100%, 100%. So it could work out. In, like They could build an amazing bike for him next year. 
and it could be a, a, it could be an amazing decision. But it, at the end of the day, his first choice was the factory Ducati. Yeah, hundred percent. So, I think it's everyone's first choice. Yeah, yeah. But I think with him on this Aprilia next year, will really show how good this bike is. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I'm excited about. What yeah. about uh, just changing scenes? What about Bastianini on the KDM? I'm really excited about that as well. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, I think it'll be um, a much different riding style compared to the. F- well, I really wouldn't count Augusto Fernandez, mm. but the three that are on it that can ride really well on it, it's it's complete. His mm. riding style is completely different, so it's got the top speed. And it seems to handle really well, especially when you're pushing it hard. He likes to push it hard, but he's also really good at nursing those tires. So For sure, it'll be um, an interesting combination. It's but again, that's just all word of mouth. Yeah, he could still end up. It's a yeah, long it's, shot, but yeah. he could end up as Martin's teammate. Yeah. That's right. Potentially, all, they have, no one signed yet, so no. so that that team could be a dream team. Yeah. And I think Ducati's dropped the ball. To be honest, they've lost. If they lose Bastianini, they've lost two great, young, talented riders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or they've just gambled. They've just put all their chips in with obviously Banyaya and Marquez. Alder Gear coming in as well. Yeah. But yeah, jury's out on him. Yeah. True. Fraud, 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 yeah. what? Surely not. Yeah, yeah, nah, fraud he's Moto 2 Fraud Watch. Yeah. For oh, sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Fair but enough. I agree. If if you're Jorge Martin and if Bastianini leaves, especially Jorge Martin, like talk about for the rest of this season and then next season, the amount of motivation you're going to have to prove Ducati wrong. So like, imagine if you take the number one plate to Aprilia. What? That's unbelievable, actually, thinking oh, that. And I hope he does. Oh, imagine that would be that. great. And How good would that that's, be? That's legit. You can, well, he's you leading can... the championship oh, on a non-factory unreal. team. But, okay, okay, this has to go back to last year. There's got to be some favoritism now towards Bagnaia, new parts. Surely he's not going to get the same benefit. True, yeah. Has that always happens. Have, they did that with Lorenzo. They'll, they'll hold off on some stuff, I think. Oh, goodness. Which sucks, man. Like, you want them on equal bikes that's the thing but they're gonna be close enough i reckon anyway like really yeah i don't know it's gonna be um, it's like his tire like magically went there's a guitar and, last year like it <laughs> can't commit seriously what do you mean yeah gg galenia buddy look, there's clicking so, his fingers <laughs> there's so many things you can take into account yeah. if you look at um the championship standings just from a, a race perspective he's so well i don't think he's so far behind but he's a lot further behind than I think what yeah. Peko currently yeah, is now yeah. with yep. both put together. And then vice versa, if you look at just sprints, he's miles ahead. Yeah. So there's still a lot that he's got to work out properly. We've seen with the tie gamble at Phillip Island um, when he was trying to come back through the pack in Qatar, mm. you know, he's just got to iron them out. It's still a long season to go. Yes, he looks like he's more polished, but when it comes to the pointy end, will he be? Mm. There's a long season. A lot of to pressure. Go. A lot of pressure. So there's, anything can happen with those three riders. Really. Maybe this might unleash him though. It might take the weight of you know the world off his shoulder and go. I'm, I've got my. I'm going somewhere different next year. I'm not fighting for that factory seat like I have been mm. the last two years. And he might come out and absolutely dominate the rest of the season. And it's a very scary prospect if that happens. Bagnai looked bloody good though, didn't he? It's it's the break's almost coming in an unfortunate time for Peko though, as in like he's got all this momentum and then we're going to Assen in three weeks, whatever it is. Yeah, if yeah. I if I reckon if you're Banyai, I think oh, just give me like two more rounds because he's he's right there, like he's the most informed rider. Mm. Like Marquez is like there, and then Martins had that one off, but. I think the pressure the pressure valve is now being released and it's going to be a very interesting end second half of the season, I guess you could say. 100%, man. I'm really looking forward to oh, it. It doesn't it's, get any it's better. It's going to be great. but um, It's got a lot of races jam-packed in a small amount of time. Like we talked about the biggest season ever, but there's no there's one race in six weeks. Yeah. But that, that second half of the season looks packed. Like yeah. there's two triple headers, I think, as well. Mm. So we're going to have a lot to talk about. Oh, I can't wait. Anyway, it's um, it's just good for the sport. It's good for us. There's a lot of talk. It's, it's, it's almost put the pressure valve off us a little bit because that's all we've been talking about is Marquez <laughs> and Martin and, and Yaya. It's like, it's done. Still, so many pieces of the puzzle though. Yeah, I so mean, many teams have got yeah open spots. Repsol, Honda, where Miller's going to go. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all rumors at the stage, but so yeah. with onto Miller, uh, KDM has offered him 
gas, gas, or tech three, whatever it is. Okay. And he's weighing up his options on what he wants to do. Fucking hell, he should have signed already, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. He did He did come out and say, I got a quote here. So um, they're going to get rid of a gusto for yeah, 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 yeah. which is stock standard. He came out and said, I didn't sign up to this project to leave after two years, though. So yeah. he has been offered a tech three seat. So, I, or, yeah, tech three seats. So I reckon he's going to take Man, that. Man, KDM, I know Miller's having his struggles, but KDM having those four riders, fuck, that's four good riders. Four great riders. So Bastianini, if he goes, Miller, and then you've got the young gun, Pedro, and Binder. Like, that's so that's a that's a fully fl- that's, fledged. It's a great team. Four bikes going into next year, and they're all got experience. Who would you rather, Bastianini on that factory, factory bike of Pedro or Binder? No, Binder. I'd rather Binder. Bastianini. I, I'd rather Bastianini. Really? Yeah. I rate him young, more. Young, so, young team. Yeah. yeah, I know. The thing is, though, they can't, like, they have to reward Binder for his efforts. Bastianini hasn't lit up the house on fire so yeah, but what, what if it's a ba- yeah what if it's a binder port, port to he hasn't done, he's done nothing this year nothing the yeah. second half of last year nothing mm. I mean, yeah, he really dropped the ball last yeah. year I yeah. think I think there's I, there's no way they'll put Bastianini in that factory team though absolutely no way <sighs> look no nah. Unless the he comes things, home really strong, and crazier things have happened, yeah. and look who's riding the factory Ducati next year. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> true, it's very true. That, that wouldn't even be that crazy compared to Marquez signing the factory Ducati anyway. But. Well, like, okay, yeah, you can reward loyalty, but loyalty is only going to get you so far. But that's loyalty is not giving you results. And I think they're starting to learn that. KDM. I think so. Yeah, you know. Like, but we can't deny Binder's talent. No, yeah, he's no, got, no of, doubt. Of course, yeah. he's got talent, but massive he, fan. And yeah. what he's done the first half of last year, the year before, he he like even I think he had a great, he had some good races in the second half of last year. I think I mean Valencia crashed from the lead, didn't he? So, but I mean, okay, name a memorable race besides Austria from Brad Binder. Uh, Thailand, I think he finished second. The one like, with uh, Martin. Yeah, he was Bagnaya. fighting. For, he was that, fighting yeah. for the win. Yeah. yeah, he could have won that race, but. But it, okay, you fun. really got to think about it though, don't you? I was pretty That's quick. <laughs> <laughs> Not quick enough. <laughs> oh, when I think of Brad Binder, but I think of when he used to carve through in uh, Moto Three from the back of the yeah, grid towards the back of the grid. Like, well. He did more. Like, people might come at me, but I think he did more there than what he's done in GP. Yeah, look, and he came in the GP as well, where the bike was probably underperforming as well, and he helped develop it, develop it to where it is, which is awesome. But like, he's not cutting the mustard either. We're quick. We're quick on the podcast, aren't we? Oh, we're yeah. quick to just nail you, nail you down when you're not performing. <laughs> but it's oh, been right. it's been a year and a half though. Like seriously, no, we're not a year and a half. We're at least six races in. No, but from his performance, mm. true. So he did nothing last year. No. Nah. All right. Nah. All right. Well, yeah, it's it's we're harsh but fair. I mean, that's what we're all about, aren't we? We're, we're, there's no grey areas here. Yeah. I think it's most two, two, is it two years without a win for him. It's something like that. He's done. He's had a few sprint wins, and that's it. Yeah, it's every yeah, two the years. Sprint wins. Yeah, the sprint Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'd be putting Bastianini in the Costa. That's a great team. That's a great team. Disagree. If you put if mm. if Bastianini goes. Yeah, that's right. If big if. But I reckon this. Uh, I, I I'm not too sure because Maverick Vinales has a bit reportedly been offered 10 mil to go to Honda, 10 million <laughs> euros to go to Honda. And I reckon, and they and they reckon it's not a done deal, but it's eighty percent there. Take it and run. Take freak. it and run, and then that's probably why Bastianini hasn't signed for KDM because there's that there's that spot open for Aprilia, and then there's your Italian dream team oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, that's right. It's Ten million euros, Maverick Honda. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, there was some news. Yeah, there was some news out with Vinales, and they obviously they're going to build that team around Martin. And they want, I would assume they want an Italian rider in the Italian team. Of course. Two Spanish boys. So, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Repsol Honda, $10 million. Fucking, what do you do? Of course you're going to take you, it. Mm, you're guaranteed not to, not to have a win for three seasons. And maybe be paralyzed. <laughs> That's the other thing. <laughs> It's That's dangerous. a good point, though. <laughs> it's dangerous it's bike good, to like, ride. Dwight and me is confidence. He, like, you can push him over like, like this, I reckon. <laughs> just fucking, he'll just fall down because like, he's just... <laughs> as soon as you lift a hand. But when he's 26 years old, he's a world champion, he wants to retire because the bike's so shit. That's that tells so, you everything. So yeah. you know? Marini, a star, not a star, but very good rider. Mid- and mid-pack f- rider. Finishing 40 seconds behind the yeah. leader and stuff. Like, it's... I don't know. You're better off on a Moto2 bike. They're, it's, honestly, they're in a world of hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um, but 
man, if you're a maverick, you're on your way out. And I take personally the think money. you're on your way out anyway. Take the cash. Yeah. Take it and run. Look yeah. what Fabio's done. Yeah. He's lucky he's young and he can set himself up this mm. way and then go still find a team. But for Maverick, what? let's be realistic here. What's he got left? You know, maybe, maybe a year. We maybe. Get, um, we get a lot of comments about Maverick, don't we? On Insta. Yeah, we do. There are some, a lot of Maverick fans out I there. I know, I know. We get crucified for it, but... You all don't know anything. That's the problem. <laughs> Y'all. Y'all don't know anything. <laughs> we're the proper armchair we're, experts. Yeah, we're the proper armchair we experts. Have, so halfway through the season, are we going to redo our uh, 2024, 2025 predictions for the grid? Because I don't think we've got one right yet. No. <laughs> oh, you we, are, got, we got ours Yeah, right. you got a I, think, I think we've got a couple, you and I. Okay. I think we've got a few of them right. Mm, I think I'm on zero for, <laughs> zero for five. <laughs> if you take away all the, like... Um, Riders that had already signed, we've got a few right. I think. Yeah, we're pretty good. Yeah, we are. I'll take yeah. it back. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> James are. can redo his. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Sorry, well, gonna, you know, gonna, someone's got to think outside the box. You know, sometimes it doesn't land. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, got to throw shit at a wall sometimes. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. <laughs> let, it, let it stick. <laughs> um. Yamaha, Yamaha and Pramac. It seems it's, like it's a done deal, doesn't it? It's still it, going around. It's I still going they, around. So obviously when um, one of the guys from Pramac came out and said that they're staying, it wasn't signed. <laughs> There's so. a meme going around. It's like more Bedelli standing there. <laughs> oh, it's my God. The, Pramac, the Ryan know? Reynolds one. <laughs> Is <it> this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and, and Morbidelli's finally doing good. <laughs> no, no. <and> Yamaha's <laughs> just knocking on his door again. His leg's finally healed. <laughs> That's the best. He got, finally got out of there. And they're siding with him. That's hilarious. Hey, he might fall up. Factory Aprilia, watch out. <sighs> Bro. Jesus. You know what? Don't even say that. Don't even say that. But then, okay, let's just do a hypothetical. Primax signs with Yamaha. Uh, who's riding on that bike next year? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I My brain's not even working. Because, yeah. like, older guys not, can't go there because he signed with Ducati. Correct. So he'll be at either uh, Grassini or VR46. Surely Morbidelli isn't going to go. That might be his only option. Maybe. God, he'll kill himself. <laughs> That's not as bad as the Honda. Let's be real. Yeah, it's not as bad as the nah, Honda. Alex like, Trin seems to be staying on the bike this year. Like, not as it's surprising for him. Yeah, yeah. Alex Trin. Um, maybe someone from Moto2. That, yeah. might, that might open up another opportunity for someone to come up. Yeah. Because no one will want to go on that bike. No. Nah. Mm. So, man, it's... I can't see Pramac moving away from Ducati though. That's for me. Yeah, that's baby, more of a, yeah. That's more has Pramac ever not been Ducati? Has no, that team no, ever not been for, yeah. 20, for twenty years? The last twenty years they've been Ducati. They they sponsored a two stroke five hundred Honda like back in two thousand or nineteen ninety nine. This is my this is full, before Ducati was even there. Yeah, before Ducati was even there on the two stroke. That's, that's my autism like really who, kicking, yeah, kicking in kicking right there. Who owns the team? That big um, berry looking guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's his? What's his, he what's, looks like a big wog rich dog. That guy. So, Prim- so cool. So Primax a business, obviously. It's a generators. A generators, but they don't. They sponsor the team. They don't own the team. Correct. So, I mean, there's no. They just love like a. They just love Ducati, obviously. Yeah. Is Primax an Italian? I brand? assume so. My mate, remember Marlon? Shout Mar- out to Marlon. His dad, his dad worked, for, worked for Primax, and we got to eat um, lunch with the Primax boys. That's hectic. Yeah, I got into their box. It was pretty cool. I had no idea what it was until I spoke to him. And he's like, yeah, it's a generator. My old man works for a generator company and flicked out all these passes. I'm like, beautiful. Mm, take that. Yeah, bloody oath. So that's interesting. I mean, I hope it happens, to be honest. Yeah, it would be good for the sport. Yeah, Yamaha need another bike. Yeah. yeah. So I heard, and then we've got Grassini, you got VR. That's a good. That's still six bikes. That's still plenty. That's, yeah. that's much, plenty. much more of an even spread. Yeah. So then VR gets the factory bikes. Yeah. Or one to VR, one, one to Grassini. Depend- well, no, they would probably, yeah, get both. And VR then, will get both, then, yeah. Yeah. And then who? And then the boys, the VR boys, just stay in the same spot and take get the factory bike. Yeah. And then Eldegard to Grassini with Alex Marquez, we assume. Biggest, if Marquez, biggest assumption. Yeah, if Marquez stays, yeah, he's not lighting the world on fire, yeah, but he's on a Grassini Ducati, like. Yeah, no I one's lighting. Know. Yeah, it's, that's a tough. That's a really tricky one, Alex Marquez. It is. I really thought he's going to do a lot better. I think we touched on the last last yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah. But. Um, who knows? Who knows? He, you know, he, he might go back to Repsol Honda. Jeez. I hope that's a very like, very hypothetical thing. 
but we like a we like a hypothetical. Yeah, we do. That's all we. Half. That's all we work on. Three quarters of our pod. That's the concrete of our podcast. Hypothetical. It's clickbait, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We're we're struggling for for views. Thanks to whoever commented that. Yeah. 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 Kawasaki is actually returning in two years. Clip that, Gertie. Now with BMW with the new regulations, and it'll become VR46. Yeah. And there's no such thing as um, four strokes. It's three strokes now in the racing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make them three cylinders. Speaking yeah. of VR46, changing codes for just a second, we've got Le Mans 24 hour this weekend. And Rossi is racing for the first time at Le Mans. So yeah, it's super it's exciting. That's exciting, yeah. And he won. They won last round, didn't they? So They did. That's going to be, um, that's going to be cool for uh, another little reason to watch it this weekend. Mm. It's a bit on this weekend. Well, no MotoGP, no F1, though. Superbikes. Oh, oh, beautiful. Thank God. We're back. Oh, man. Where is it? Uh, Misano. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. Beautiful. That's nice. Yeah. So they've done a bit of testing through there. So it should be good. They do a lot of testing. We've got so much time to fill. Oh, yeah, they I do know. so much testing. If, if you see any what of are even, What are they even testing? It's a production bike, basically. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. And it sort of seems to be, in the next few years, it's going to really be just a production bike. Yeah. Oh, they're changing that? Well, if everything... Goes ahead with this 800 rule or 850, whatever they're going to in GP. They don't want super bikes to be quicker. Uh, so they're okay. going to literally make it like what super stock was back in the day. I don't mind that. So I as don't long know. as the racing's good. Oh, the, the racing will still be amazing. Mm. I don't know exactly what those rules entail, whether mm. it's no engine work at all and you can just do little suspension and. Are like they controlled awesome. ECUs as well for super bikes or are they. Like what Moto GP is? Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Because they got out of hand for a, yep. a while. That's the, been the that. best thing for Moto GP, that, yeah. that rule. That's yeah. changed everything. That's what brought Ducati back into the forefront, was mm. that control. Because that's where J- the Japanese just dominated yep. the ECU. And that's Correct. all the anti wheelie, anti ABS, all that kind yeah. of stuff. All goes through that one computer. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's like most of your motorcycle now. Yeah. Until Aero came in. Yeah. You know. Um, last thing, boys, if you guys don't have anything else, but. I keep reading that Dobby was looking for a... This is not clickbait. <laughs> Dobby was looking to have a potential return. Yes. GP. Primac did, Yamaha, bro. I did see this. He's 40. Would he be 40? It doesn't matter. It's, Do- it's Dobby. He's he's ageless. God. I love Dobby, but nah. Yeah. He's Over- Dobby. Overrated? Oh, no, I think he's fairly rated. Okay. How can you not like Andre Davizioso? He's everyone's favourite. Right? He's awesome. He's awesome. But... Just interesting, like he well, did he did he win a moto two oh, moto sorry not moto one two, two five one, he two, won a one two five, then he would have been two fifties so that's how old he is yeah and I don't know if he won on a two fifty uh, championship because then he went up to his first year was in oh seven when they went to the eight hundreds and he had that silver oh the G- GIR yeah what a bike that was cool that was awesome sick. bike but I I couldn't tell you if he won two fifties because he would have been going up against. Barbara and Bautista, maybe Lorenzo. Lorenzo. It was all similar time. Yeah, and that talk about a stack championships that one. Mm. Correct. Yeah, so he won the O four one two five. Yeah, and he finished second in O seven on the two fifties. Oh, so it must have been oh wait, he went up for his first year. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. So was, oh yeah, it was too. So what is he? Thirty thirty eight then? Correct. He's thirty eight. Yeah, because eighteen years old, he won won the championship. Um, one two five. Quick math. Quick math. Yeah, nice. So yeah, that was that. I'm trying to see who um, who he finished second to, actually. What year? Yeah, he finished second to Lorenzo. Alex in did, 07. In 07, 260. Uh, mm-hmm. Lorenzo finished on 312 points. 07. Is that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, this is your top five for that year. Uh, Jorge Lorenzo, Andrea De Vitioso, Alex DeAngelis. Avara Bautista and Hector Barbara. Jesus. That's a, that was prime time yeah. 250s. Yeah, it was prime time 250s. I reckon that's when I first started watching like MotoGP. Yeah, yeah. Like on yeah. a weekly basis or like a, a roundly basis. Oh, some good names in there, man. I'm but just looking through the list. Barbara got the rough, rough end of the stick he out of all really that. He really did, man. He got demoted to CRTs. He, he raced for Prime Act Ducati back in the days. They should do an episode of them, a homage. Mm. If they leave, we should be doing a homage to them. Mm. That's some decent riders. That's some good. Johnny Hernandez, Tony Elias, Tony Elias. <laughs> oh, I love Johnny Hernandez. He's my favourite. Ben Spees, yeah. Yep. Ben Spees, uh, rode for him. Uh, Loris Caparossi, correct. He did. He ran Simoncelli's number on that yeah. bike. Yeah. Um, who else raced for him? <laughs> Bautista. 
<laughs> yeah, so like, second delivery is going as well, boys. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah. That was the, that was the white and green Primax. <laughs> Remember? I remember. I can, I can see it right now. <laughs> um, you're going to give us our MJ Trading Cards performance of the week there, young Daniel Brishy? I will. Uh, MJ Trading Cards performance of the week, boys. We've gone for Michael Dunlop mm. in the Isle of Man. Great choice. Great. Uh, so he equaled his uncle Joey Dunlop's record of 26 wins. That's a, that's a wild, man. It is insane. Um, and especially these guys, they're racing super sport. Yep. Uh, super Twin mm. and Super Bike. Like, they're just unbelievably talented athletes, talented riders, and to do what they do and keep coming back mm. uh, to an event that's so dangerous is amazing. So he's currently sitting on 29 wins now. Yeah. So he's won. So he must have clean. Races. He must have won four races over the week. Yeah. So he, he won. Six races in total, I'm pretty sure. So he won yeah. Super Sport Race One. And then he won. Where are we going? Where are we going? God, it's that one sport in the world that experience outweighs yeah. youth. You I know? think the I think whenever they say it's like it takes four or five years mm. just to properly learn the track. Yeah, yeah. He won super super twin race one, which brought him to twenty seven. So technically, the goat. Um, that sidecar. Davy Todd won. I saw that super stock race one on the Beamer or something. Yeah, uh, that would have been on the Ducati. Oh, okay, right. I think was it. On Superstock? Oh, no, on the BMW. Sorry, you're correct. Uh, Super Twin Race 2, Michael Dunlop won for Victory 28. And then Super Twin Race 2, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't get any more dangerous, though. To win how many times? 29 times, whatever it is. That's just a win. So then you're going to race more than that. And mm. then, yeah. like, it's it's crazy because these guys race year in, year in, year out. There's, like, one or two deaths a year. They normally know the guy and they keep coming back. I it's mean, wild. You man. just hope that uh, these records get broken and they just go. You know what? I'm happy now. Hang up the boots. But it just they don't. They don't work. Their mind no, doesn't work like that. Look at John McGuinness. Yeah, he's been around for oh, donkeys geez. years, man. He's still going. Peter Hickman. He had a, a bit of a uh, tumble. I saw Hickey. a couple of big offs. Yeah. They had some good footage. Yeah. I mean, not good footage, but they had some footage this year. This year of a couple of offs and like, oh god, you can get so unlucky or lucky. Yeah, it's wild, man. And you got fucking tree. You got trees. You got like curbs. Yeah. Yeah. You literally run past someone's front door. Yeah. So I think Josh Brooks. There was a. He was like up on a curve. Somehow saved it, going like what one ninety or something. Yeah, they're nuts. <laughs> I, I don't just don't do don't get it. I just don't, I never I never could understand what goes on in their mind because there's no way I could ever ever attempt to do that. Just the experience, like that's all it is. That's yeah, experience and balls. It must just have that in such an adrenaline rush. Oh, it would be. It it'd have to be. I'd love to know what their like heart rate is if they wear like a heart rate monitor. Oh, mm. I don't think they would. <laughs> no, nah, well, I think John McGuinness's training is just literally just drinking Guinness. <laughs> That's literally it. <laughs> That's a cool last name, Big Guinness. Well, on his um, his butt patch is yeah. MC with a bot like a, a <laughs> Guinness. schooner or Guinness or a pint of Guinness or whatever it is. But it's funny, like um, so Hickman came off in that that race. He walked into a pub and just like sat in the pub oh, while the race was going. Uh, the same with Michael Dunlop throughout one of the like practice days. Went That's into so a pub, funny. got a beer, like jumped back on his bike. <laughs> These guys are like they're wild yeah, and it's awesome are. to see. But um yeah, hats off Michael Dunlop, well done. Yes. That's performance of the week for us. Uh MSR fifteen percent for first order as well. Get on it. And they're, they're getting Beautiful. into Formula One cards, aren't they? They are soon, yes. Yeah, motorsport cards, which will be the next big thing, I reckon. We'll, we'll, ju we'll jump on a couple then. We should do a we might do a collaboration with yeah. them. Yeah. Like a live break, maybe. That sounds good. We should do some um like player stats for us. We'll get our own cards going. <laughs> Yes, David, sure. Uh, Tom can be uh, talking shit 99, throwing shit at a wall 99. 99. James' yeah. uh, eyes darting around 99. <laughs> no, nose length 99. Big dick 99. <laughs> Minus. <laughs> right you are. <laughs> Get out to F1 for Christ's sake. Um, well, I want to know your most impressive, most disappointing, and your most surprising. Me first. Yeah. Most impressive for me, Mercedes, because I did not expect them to do anything. They've done nothing all year, and they've come out and got a third and a fourth. Yeah. I was um, just telling Daniel before. I was like George Russell. He is. He is what is the the opposite of an ice cold man. Mm. Like normally, David Alonso, like just 
end of the race just knows when the he's, he's lukewarm like <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. The man's lukewarm. And then he repassed um, Hamilton. I was like, oh, okay, maybe he's got a little bit more into it. But normally, like, he just fumbles right at the end. Yeah, he, true. he just makes too many mistakes. Yeah. And it's just that, I mean, he w- he would have won that race. He seriously would have yeah, well, won yeah, that he race. He came off in one of the chicanes yeah, as well did. halfway he through. Did. He did. Just... He would have won that race. So it was really, really disappointing. And, um... And it's happened countless times. He just and I was talking to Dammy about this. He just doesn't have that extra five percent nah. that some others do. He's got the talent. He's quick. He's quick in qualifying. He's, he's probably too busy complaining in his helmet the whole time. Yeah, he's just <laughs> um, he was he was it, and he he came out after the race and said I, I'm super disappointed in myself. Mm. And Hamilton came out and said it was the worst race he's ever. Yeah, I saw that he's ever had. So obviously they had the pace. They just couldn't. Couldn't do anything with it. They're probably just surprised they're up there again. And how Shell Hamilton, shots. how Hamilton let Russell back through, yeah. which we'll go on later. But Unlike that was him. amazing. It's just such a weird thing to happen. So, uh, biggest surprise for me, uh, Ferrari nowhere. Like they had such a good round in Monaco. Uh, what the one and three, and then look, it's Italian cars and um, like rain. This the with the electrics just doesn't. No good. No good. No good. <laughs> Too much rust. You, you send out a Ferrari on a nice thirty degree day and. Rome or something like that, but you know, <laughs> yeah. not not in Montreal. Just didn't have the pace all weekend. No, they didn't. And and and, Le- and to be honest, Leclerc's fighting for a championship. It's super disappointing. He was thirty well, points behind. Now he's twenty. They got zero five, zero points for the, and then that's massive for the team's championship. Yep. And you know yeah, how much right. money goes into that. Yeah. Didn't they say, like almost double that lead as yep. well? Yeah. yeah so Verstappen's gone from thirty to fifty five against Leclerc, and then that's that's a crazy lead. So. Yeah. You know, and trying to call back uh, Red Bull as well. Like, if you give him an inch, they take a mile. Um, and most disappointing for me was the rain staying away when Haas was cutting through the field. I was just praying for it. The rain was like I was loving watching K Mag cut through good. the field. And but that's then, where the, those changeable conditions are so good because yeah. you get to see those minor teams take a gamble and yep. and, and and nearly do it. Yep. I really enjoyed that as well. It's a good great point. Yeah. And and as we always say, uh, a tie gamble never works and it never works and they didn't get any points, but yeah. it was exciting. But they, but they weren't far off yeah. at the end there. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't. They, no, they had a, yeah. I mean, it's impressive. They would have finished 17 18 anyways. You might as well have a crack. You might as well have a crack, especially in that sport when you know, yeah, that's right. You're going to be last almost. Yeah, that's right. You are the salvers. Mm. Uh, well, for me, the most impressive was yeah, Lando Norris's pace, uh, especially that end of that first scene on that in- intermediate tire. He was he must have just sat back and just waited and waited and waited, kept his tires, and he was slapping about two seconds a lap faster than than, than um, Verstappen. So mm. he could have, I mean, anyone could have won today, but he could have seriously won that race. He would have won that race. If Crash Sergeant didn't didn't do what he does, he's cra- he crashed three times in the race. <laughs> no, like it just shows you how. You know how less of ability this guy is, and, and I can't wait to he pisses off and Science comes into that team next year. People, he's another one people defend as well. Logan <sighs> Sargent, I don't understand. Oh my god, it. Sargent got into Q two. Fucking who cares? <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit. Sorry. Um, <laughs> most surprising for me was how Perez has still got a seat next year in that Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. that is a surprise for me. And is he it just was a one year contract, one year with one. More option, okay. so okay. technically so one plus one, one plus one, technically two. But out in Q one, I mean, how many times has that happened this year? He's in the fastest car. He was nowhere in the race, nowhere, yeah. um, and just so disappointing. And just no race craft. Does he doesn't have the perfect conditions? Doesn't do anything. <sighs> yeah, it's got to be set up for yeah. him. Doesn't bit, it? Bit Otherwise, of a cheeseburger, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. You've been shaved, Perez. You've fucking <laughs> been shaved. Um, and then may, most disappointing, just to reiterate your comments, Ferrari for me, lack of pace, double DNF. And then Ferrari putting Leclerc on hard tyres when it started to drizzle. Yeah. I mean, put, at least give him the softs. I mean, Jesus Christ, give him a chance. I mean, it's drizzling. You got no, like, I just couldn't believe that. Like, it was raining. That just shows you how amateur they still are, those those Italians. Yeah, it's like, right. there's just, I just don't understand. That was just a vintage Ferrari. It right? was. <laughs> and I just couldn't believe that it. it's just going back to their old ways again. Like, how stupid that was. But yeah, so I got up and about again. But yeah. What about you, Daniel? Uh, most impressive was uh, K Mag on the wets. Yeah. That was amazing to watch Cutting that first through. lap. I think what was seven or eight positions in a lap. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was really amazing to watch. And man, that, for those guys to trail each other in those conditions would be. Insane. Talk, yeah. talk about on board skill. Oh, mate, it's, um, that's unbelievable. Mm. Biggest disappointment, Logan Sargent. Like, 
I think it's pretty stock standard. Um, yeah. He's so shit and he just ruins the races for others as well. It's so weird because you see, I think, Sign, Sergeant, maybe someone else, like they just kind of touch too much of the curb and then the whole car's is gone. But he just, just did it like three oh. times. Like he like fully locked. Like I don't know how he even did that. Like he got, it was nowhere near the breaking point. Just completely muffed the corner that first time. Mm. And then he somehow got out of there. But yeah, anyway. Get rid of him. Get him yeah, off. Get rid of him. Get, get Minson off. Um, biggest <laughs> surprise was um, double top 10 for Alpine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, big surprise. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. They, as we know, they've been nowhere this year and they've got a lot of dramas obviously internally uh, with people leaving and, and now this whole thing with uh, Esteban Ocon. But for well, Ocon to, had a five-place grip penalty as well. Yeah, that's right. So there was um, a lot of good... I guess that's a lot of good for them for this weekend, so they can they go away from that being mm. pretty um, pretty happy. So yeah, that was that was very surprising to see, but super tight. The race in general, I thought it was really great really race. Good. Yeah, good best race of the year so far. Best race of the year yeah. and five different manufacturers in the top ten. That's sorry, good to see. in the top six, I should say, in qualifying was um, so it is really really competitive. A um, couple of points throughout the the weekend on Friday, fans got turned away from the gates. Because of the weather? No. Oh. The police thought that the whole day had been cancelled. Oh, so all yeah, the train right. stations, everything said, guys, it's all cancelled. We're not letting you in. And then they all went home, started to go home, and then they pr- first practice started and everyone's like, what the hell? So it's a big issue at the moment with F1 and and the, the Montreal police. So so really interesting. And I feel so sorry for those people. They were waited all year, yeah. bought the tickets, Got on the train, like what where happened to us in you know Formula One a few years ago yeah, when it yeah. got cancelled with COVID, and they got there and it wasn't cancelled. They were they were actually in the side of the track seeing the cars go around, going, "Why are you letting us in?" So yeah, really um, unfortunate for them. That's that's so weird. I know it was such a weird thing. And how was that timing in for qualifying? I mean, Verstappen and Russell the same time, identical, and not uh, yeah. zero zero zero. Like, how does that happen? Like, what's the chances of that happening? It's only what they say. It's only happened second twice time. or second three time. Yeah. And the last time it happened was was uh, Villeneuve, Jerez, Jerez, Schumacher, and Schumacher and, yeah. yeah, and, and France, whatever, whatever. Uh, Heinz Harold France. That's it. Oh, you'll like that one, Davy. Um, I have a German. I it's got to be a conspiracy theory there. How does it? What's the what's the chances of that happening? Oh, it's like I just don't get how that is possible. That that it's a they're on the same time, but also that it's zero zero zero. Like I don't know. Uh, That's crazy. It well, is, and do the maths for us, Curtis. <laughs> what is that? Wait, we, Get uh, a calculator out. Um, and Russell obviously put that lap in first. Russell put the lap in first. Yeah. yeah. Yep. What, what did you guys think of Verstappen? Like, I think over racecraft, he was just, what I noticed, he was just so much more patient than he has been in recent years. Like yeah. he was second. He we, don't see him se- out. we don't see him second very often. And he dropped Third in behind. one stage? Yeah, he dropped yeah. in behind. He just kept his tie. And he made a mistake. Yeah, yep. and, but it was just yeah. really interesting. Like, if that was him th- two, three years ago, a completely different animal. Oh, yeah. And I remember him in Turkey 2021. He was on the wets. So it was a wet race and just hell for letter. Yeah. Span out, kept going, nearly crashed. Like, and it just shows how much more maturity he's got now. But I think after winning a couple of world championships, yeah. What do you, you got? What else you got to lose? I suppose. Yeah, and That's you get cool. older, and I think mm. as well the strategy was really good. Like they pitted them at the right time. They were unbelievable. With you that know, one, like they were just on the ball. You know what really impressed me as well. Uh, this should have been my most impressive, but uh, another impressive was Oscar Piastri. He actually got the team said to him, "Are you able to fight for victory?" And he goes, "No." Nah. He, he goes, goes "I'm not." Yeah, more true. problems behind. I got me. more yeah. problems behind me. Concentrate on that. And I thought, like, they were asking him. If he wanted Lando to move over yeah. for him at the show, he goes, no, no, no. Just like, how mature is that? That was, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I did. I was, I was like, wow, that's. Imagine if that was Ocon or Gasly or oh, that would Yuki Tsunoda. Or... Tell him to move. Oh my god, they would be like, yeah, get the fuck out of the way, I'll go. And then they don't do anything, and then and then they have to swap back, and then it just causes more problems. I just thought that is so super mature. It was interesting that they said that though, because he had who who was behind him? Was it Russell behind him trying to get out? But then like there wasn't much leeway even if they yeah. wanted to try and pass. That's right. It would have been a big problem. Yeah. That's so right. I think he, he calculated that really well. And that just shows great um, trust within the team. Mm. I, know, I think, yeah, hundred percent. It seems to be that McLaren's bridged that gap a little bit more now to Red Bull as a overall, team. Overall, like yeah, the team yeah. synergy and their drivers, their car, everything seems to just be working yep. really, really well for them. The second best team, I reckon, 
on the outside with, yeah. with team synergy and just sure. race craft almost. But like how good is it? You've got those top four teams and then and even Aston Martin, <coughs> like they're on their tails as well. So Yeah, the six and sevens this round. Yeah, yep. so I'm actually do you want to give us results? Yeah, yeah for I'm sure. Sorry about that. Uh, Max Verstappen first, Lando Norris second, George Russell third, Lewis Hamilton fourth, Oscar Piastri fifth, Fernando Alonso sixth, Lance Stroll seventh, Daniel Ricciardo eighth, Pierre Gasly ninth, and Esteban Ocon tenth. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. How was um, Villeneuve and Ricciardo about to punch on? Yeah, I mean, I just, Villeneuve. Oh, I Try, just, trying to stay relevant, you reckon? I think so. It's like Kane Corns. <laughs> it's like Kane Corns. Like, he just says, it's a bit like Tom Shavey, like, actually. Just says, <laughs> he's, he says his outlandish things to get a reaction. And I think yeah, that's just yeah. a. Yeah, you said some stuff over the years. Yeah, uh, most of them hit, but, you know, some <laughs> don't. Um, but, yeah, I just, and not needed. Like, yeah. in a day and age, I know this sounds a bit corny and whatever, but in a day and age of mental health and all that kind of stuff, I just don't think you could come out and say that on a, on a race weekend. And on the live Sky Sports, you know, um, coverage, I mean, I just think it was just too brash and too He had harsh. a proper crack at him. Yeah. He did. Or you can just choose better words, I don't know, like just be a bit more elegant about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to probably bridge that into a sentence rather than say, you know, why is he still here? Like that's, I think that's rude. Mm. Pers- personally, and I think, um, I mean, he showed him, didn't he? He had a great qualifying and then went backwards a little bit in the race, but leave that stuff yep. up to the podcasters like us. Yeah, we say those type of things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Considering yeah. he had a five second penalty, they're still finishing in the top 10. Yep, and that's his best result for the year, I think. Yeah, it was, um, it was, I mean, it's, it was an up and down race, and and again, yeah, that five second and a harsh five second time penalty. I did see the car slightly rolling. On the on the on the start, so it was a false start, but oh, geez, yeah, it is rough. Isn't Better it? than a drive through penalty. That's why the yeah. five second penalty is yeah. great. That's why the long lap penalty is yeah, great. Moto GP so well. as well. Yep. Um, Sonoda, yeah, long time to be on those those tires. Though. He nearly he went the whole race on one set of tires. And then almost took old mate. Who was it? One of the Hasses out. Yeah, maybe? I think it was yeah. Magnuson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do well to dodge it, didn't he? That was that was so close. Even when Russell cut the chicane mm. and Verstappen came through. That yeah. was really, really close also. Yeah. There was a couple um, couple of them. I think if that was dry, that Russell would have got a penalty for that because he came back onto the racing line. If you come, if you rejoin, you're supposed to rejoin off the racing yeah. line. Correct. And the other thing was with uh, who did go off on that chicane? I think it was Russell. And, like, you're supposed to rejoin on the left cone, but, like, you can't move in the, That's right. in the wet yeah. grass. Yeah, so yeah like, it's just going to go on straight. And I think that... What outdid Yuki because I was looking at the replay of that, and I think he tried to actually go a little bit left to go through the bollard, and the thing just span. Yeah. So interesting, and, and yeah, I mean, he had a he had a really good race. I think he was up to seventh. Yeah, or eight. he was yeah, a top ten. Was. Yeah. And um, so disappointing for him. Throwing away your points, I guess, isn't that? Well, yeah, exactly right, exactly right. So that's um, but all in all, great race, uh, and. I mean, we've got a couple. We've got a week off now, and Spain's Spain's next round. Back back to a sort of a boring ish. Sure yeah, it doesn't yeah. make great. Doesn't make great racing. Unfortunately. Yeah, good track that Canadian track. I've got to Love admit, it. I haven't Love watched it. a lot of racing from there. And it's really really good track. Yeah, it is. I thought it was awesome. The cars were filthy after that. I don't know if you saw them, but they were just. Oh, and mm. there's my tears is coming back again, but they were absolutely caked in mud. <laughs> the they deliveries were, yeah. didn't look as good. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. It freaks me out. Yeah, hey, it didn't. Did you guys see? Um, Albon's double overtake. Yes, yeah, yeah that yeah. was yes, that was ballsy. It was ballsy. That was I didn't great, see that. Yeah, it, if you get a chance, have a look at it. Yeah. It was really good. It was a more of a like, oh my god, I'm gonna hit him in the back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> yeah. But that took good driving from Ricardo as well because I think Ricardo saw that happening. Because yes. he and then he moved over more to the right and because that could have been that would have been a plane crash. Otherwise. Well, that would have been a repeat of um, was it Japan? Yeah, when they yeah. went into each other. Yep. Yeah, it was, um, that was a great overtake, some little tidbit. And 60 wins for Max. I know. Insane. It's amazing, isn't it? 50 in the last 75 yeah. races. Wow, it's yeah. come quick, hasn't it? And the thing is, like, they talked about Hamilton with 100 wins and, like, yeah, I know it's still 40 behind, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next few years. I mean, you've got 23, 24 races a season now. It's a lot of racing. So. Yeah. Um, so word on the street is Ocon having he might have a year at Mercedes because obviously Ocon's in the in bed with Toto, so that yeah. could be interesting. And then Antonelli give him one more year in the in the juniors and bring him and up, then bring him up for the new reg. So that could be an interesting. I think really good for Ocon. I mean that's that would be amazing for him, but not probably well deserved. Yeah, yeah, not not quite. 
I don't think so. And signs to Williams seems like it's a done deal. And I think that's a great team. Albon signs. That, James, that, Va- James Vowles, I rate him super highly, yeah, team do. manager. That, that's good minds coming together, though. Yep. Yep. So, um, and hopefully they can get their act together for the new regs, Williams, and they could be a powerhouse again with two great, great drivers. So. That'll, that'll be amazing to see them back up there. Yeah, yeah. everyone wants or that. Or at least in they? the midfield yeah. more, more often than not. Yeah, because they've been down and out for you know, 10 years at least. Yeah, they had they had that win at they had the win in um, at Spain, Catalonia. Funnily enough, I think what probably 10, 12 years ago with Pastor Maldonado, and then Bottas. Bottas had a couple of good races, but 2014, 2015 yes, as well. Correct. Um, but they they haven't done anything since, and and um, another team is probably waiting for the new regs to come along because it just takes one good design of one you know something that have someone else hasn't thought of yeah. before and it could change the whole thing like. Back when Braun came in and won that championship, they had that rear diffuser, double diffuser, and it just took the you know took everyone by storm. So that is a cool part of F one is the engineering side of it, how it can just make the whole season well, bring you a championship you almost straight at, away. You look at Mercedes this weekend, new front wing. Mm. Yes, I mean the the wet helped, but they were fast all weekend. They were fast yeah. in the dry. They were fast in quality. Obviously, Russell getting getting pole. So. Yeah, I mean, just it takes one big thing to to change, and and Toto came out and said like, look, it's not just a front wing; it takes a few things to make a car work yeah. really good. Uh, they've changed the floor, they've changed the side pods, but they're chasing that they're chasing that time. But it's interesting that, yeah, I mean, Hamilton just doesn't seem like the same person. So yeah, he just seems same, a bit. Yeah, no, like if he, off. bro, if he, I'm telling you, two or three years ago, he passes Russell, bro, he's going for the lead. He would have won the race. Yeah, he would have. Yeah. Gets repassed. I mean, seriously. Maybe it's a different mindset now because he know, he knows he's not a championship rival. He's just there to, I don't know. He's signed for Ferrari. I don't know. You don't give up a place, but yeah, true. Yeah. Not, just, I guess not so easily. And I think he made a mistake there. But wasn't on the coverage because he was like up behind Lando and then dropped back. Correct. So. Yeah. So um, you got some hot takes for us, Jim? Oh, I do have hot takes. Yeah. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> Well, I mean, we get hundreds and hundreds a week. Well, so you have so to, hard, you've already seen it through them, obviously. <laughs> I have. I normally circle them, but I haven't done that, so bear with me. Um, oh, fuck. Hang on, hang on. I've got a whole lot of cat photos in front of me. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, everyone's feedback on, our, feedback on our new chairs, by the way. They're like our new chairs. Yeah. We've been spending some cash. Well, while James is... um. Looking for the hot takes. Boys, congratulations. 10,000 followers. Yeah. As yes. well. And um, thank you for now. Curtis, congratulations. Yeah, thanks for if, all the support. If it wasn't yeah. for Curtis and the, the clips that he provides, yeah. it, it would have been a struggle. And obviously, thanks to everyone who listens, watches, gets around yeah, us. Yeah, comments, we appreciate likes, it. good and bad. It's all fun. I mean, I, uh, not tooting our own horn, but it is an amazing achievement after a year. Um, and we have to thank the supporters and the fans. I mean, it's just amazing. Oh, 100%. Us. Shit, happy tear. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and like we do work really hard at it. And we do. It's something that we obviously have to balance in our own lives as well. But to have that support and super, yeah, super happy and super excited for the future. Yeah, it's really fun. And it's cool just to make like a different take yeah. from like your usual people that you listen to on. I mean, at the end of the day, we'll be sitting on my couch chatting about the same stuff. The same so. thing. Yeah, it's right. microphones we'll be us. <laughs> well, I didn't even know you, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. crazy. That is a privilege. Yeah, right? yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, the first that's time what everyone you... says when they meet me. <laughs> Dave short comment. <laughs> first time you guys met on a ca- casting couch. It's just crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. True. We've got to be close to. But that's how you've got to build. you just got to build the friendship from there. You that's know? it. Yeah. Just yeah. grab them and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jerry, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, speaking of grabbing and going. <laughs> <laughs> right you are. <laughs> At Jared.Madsen. One episode suspension for Tom for his take on the previous pod. Oh, is that for the deliveries? Delivery. Yeah, well, any publicity is good publicity, as I say to people. <laughs> um, uh, what do we have here? Uh, sorry. There's so many, man. I know. Um, at Jack Giles, Martin is the new Pedrosa. Absolute phenom, but will never win a championship. <laughs> Wait, who? <laughs> Martin is the new Pedrosa. <sighs> Absolute phenom, but will never win a championship. Wow, that's a hot take. That is a hot take. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. Martin's better than Pedrosa. Is he? 
Oh, from from that um, that killer instinct point of view, killer I killer instinct. So. Yes, he's got it. I don't think Pedrosa had yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And uh, Pedrosa only won on the day where he had an advantage <laughs> of tires and what? No, nah, no, nah, I'm reading oh. the next one. Um, like he. I, I really, I really saw Pedrosa actually win a race on outright pace for the whole weekend, like Correct. pole and win. Like I don't think he ever. Well, I don't know if he ever did that. But it helps when you're 40 kilos. You don't yeah. exactly. wear the tires yeah. out. He had some great races, but yeah, that he didn't have the in, killer instinct that, like my team. That race in Mizano, I think it was his last win. He came from the clouds. He was like seventh with like 10 laps to go, mm. and just went flicked a switch and won the race. It was a, one of the best performances I've ever seen. And if we had the podcast back then, it would have been MJ performance. <laughs> <laughs> right, <you laughs> double up. You can throw it back if you really need yeah, to. Yeah, throw it back. Yeah, true. Throwing it back to throw it back. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Jack Giles again. He's put in two. Ducati won't let Martin win a championship on Pramac. Yeah. They're Italians. They will cheat. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's Jack, that's racist, first and foremost. Hey, also, we're, we're not racist on this pod. No, we're not racist on this podcast. So be careful which Italians you speak to because you might cop a backhander or two. First wait, wait, foremost. which one's the cheaters? Is it the southern or the northern Italians? <laughs> None of them. Oh, damn. Try to catch you out. No, nah, couldn't do it, mate. Um... Bad call. Underscore at at underscore Jed ten. Mark's move to the factory team proves he has the same power that Rossi did in the past. Yeah, great call. Great yeah, fair, call. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah, he 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 made that deal his own. It sounds like like yeah. he controlled the whole. Dominoes. It seemed like it, didn't it? Um, and and I think he has the he deserves that. He has the right for that. So being a seven time world champion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he used the media to his advantage and he did. he's very smart. And Rossi did the exact same thing. He did it against Max Biaggi all the time. Um, at Knob Gobbler 2024. <laughs> no way. No James, way. James, <laughs> no James, sh- James, James, James. That's not a... F- oh, my God, it is. <laughs> Curtis, have you made a sub, buddy? Knob Gobbler? <laughs> Why is it you in a fairy suit? <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it, Curtis. You were a fairy. Did I call it? Yeah, you did. <laughs> He's Poor shaking Curtis. his head. <laughs> oh my god, Nob Gobbler. <laughs> no at Nob Gobbler 2024. <laughs> Martin will struggle at Aprilia and will never get close to what he is now. Love her. Nah. I don't know. You know what? It's it's a big thing for Aprilia as well. Like, because we always say they need that that rider on that bike. And if he comes in and he doesn't perform, we know it's the bikes from because we know how talented he is. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, Vinales hasn't been the same rider for years. And Alessio <laughs> Spargo, is he really that X Factor? We, I don't think so. No, he's not. That's, mm. that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, at that underscore shady underscore V4. He's a bit of a um, number one ticket holder at the moment. Can I just have a bit of a special shout out to that shady V4? Yeah. He is actually, he could be our first or our second sponsored bike He's gonna put our his his lo- our logo on his leathers. He said, "Oh, what what a cool guy!" So he's um he's messaged us during the day. He goes, "Guys, love the pod. I was wondering if I could use your logo on my new suit livery on the bike. Love the shit you guys are doing and want to rep it." So, oh, what a legend! So, yeah. So mad respect to that shady V four, one of the OGs. Send us through your email. And we'll send you through I'm, a vector file. I've about, got it, um, I've got it all sorted. Man. I've got it all sorted. Cool, Haven't sent cool, the file cool. yet though. <laughs> yeah, um, you are not the uh, IT expert. No, no, no. <laughs> Vector file. What's that? Yeah, what's that? Um, you're. This is a good one. You're a team principal in MotoGP. What bike are you choosing, and who's on it? Mm. I did see that one. A Ducati That's a good was one. a very good one. A yeah. Ducati. You'll probably go for a KDM, I reckon. Aprilia. Yeah, there you go. I, I like that though. Yeah. I like that. No, I go Ducati. It's proven. It's a race winning, championship winning bike. Oh, I'd put Bagnaia. I'd put Bagnaia and Mark Marquez on that. Mm. It's fair enough. So mm. I'd go what the team's going to be next year. Yeah. James? So you can call me Tadotsi if you want. <laughs> um, I'll do something different to them. That was my first one, but I'll do something different. I'll go Factory KDM and mm. I'll do Marquez Acosta. Guys, how do we... Do we really rate the KDM that highly, though? Like, come I, on. I don't There's think two... So. There's Binder who... Oh, you guys don't rate Binder these days, but... He's a, he is a world class rider and he's well, done nothing on the bike. Well, look at Acosta. I know, but he's a phenom. He's a phenom. <laughs> well, you got two phenoms. I know. You got two Undertakers on that bike. But, <laughs> but 
Uh, bro, if more, <laughs> if, more Dally's fi- if more Dally's finishing top six on the Ducati, it must be an amazing bike. <laughs> I can tell you that much. No, nah, he's actually coming into his own, Frankie, but he's he's got to do it now because he's going to go back to Yamaha. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's Daniel, true. what about you? Uh, Aprilia. Fuck, all different answers. Um, Martin and Bastianini. Yeah. Okay, let me ask this question. Um, factory Ducati 2024 bike or a 2015 Repsol Honda? It's two different. It's two different things. What would you rather? What's a more powerful bike? What's a more? Oh, I'm, you know what? Bike? I'm going for the Repsol purely because of the aero. There was yeah. no aero. Ooh, I don't know. I would probably go for the factory Ducati because it seems more rideable for everyone. Hmm. When's the last time a Marquez? When's the, when's the last time someone's won on a Repsol Honda other than Marquez? World Championship. A race win. No one. Uh, last one was uh, Pedrosa, I guess. Fuck, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Pedrosa. Yeah, Paul Spargo was leading Qatar, then Bastianini came. Mm. I think Alex Marquez led for like a lap on a Repsol Honda once. Yeah. In um, Aragon, Le Mans. Or Le Mans or something. One of those. Maybe both. Yeah, maybe. He finished second both those races. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did Alex Marquez finish second in two races on the Repsol? Two in a row. Aragon and then uh, France, wet, mm. wet race in That's France. That's impressive. Danilo Petrucci, the rainmaster. Mm. <laughs> he's looking old. Man, he's lucky to be alive. I know. From yeah, after that crash. He looks as our poor fella. Well, that's what happens when you um, do Dakar and MotoGP yeah. and Superbikes and whatever else. Done a bit of everything. Um, at JRT900, who will be Mark Marquez's crew chief uh, next year, Santi or Frankie? Frankie. I'd like to see Frankie go across. Yeah. That's a great question. Great I really question, like that. Yeah. Um, I think Santi and Mark have done their bit. Then, and I think the, yeah. then Frankie then, Carcetti's a genius. Yeah, I would I would have him over Santi Hernandez. Yeah. Frankie's and, done it. Yeah. He's proven now that he can do it with this Ducati also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. is a genius. And he's he's unbelievable. And, and yeah. Santi was great on the I guess on the Honda, but I don't even know if they would want him over there. It's not like he can take much from the Honda there anyway, where Frankie's already been on the Grassini. That's the that's the guy. One yeah. championship with Suzuki and me. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. He's, he's the man. Right. He is he, the man. He's very good. He's been around the traps for a long time. They both have, but mm. I, I'd be taking Frankie Carcetti any day. Uh, tough one to read, but I'm going to read it. At underscore D Bernhardt underscore. Jack Miller will not get a seat 2025 and move on to World Superbikes. Mm, I did say that one. Well, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. It does sound like he's signing for Gas Gas next year. Or KDM. Yeah, yeah sorry, KDM. Take three. And I think he say. came out and said he didn't want to go to Superbikes just yet anyway. Okay, yeah, I didn't even see I that. I think. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. you got to wait till you're completely washed up before yeah. coming there. He said not World Superbikes. He said back to ASBK, <laughs> I think, is what he said. Oh, uh, we could get for him. Six races a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three-month breaks. Don't even, don't even go there. They're mm. still a month away, I think. All right. out. Um, at... Ain't nothing new. Joe Marinello needs to be on the pod. Oh, no, get him on. The frog. <laughs> the frog. We'll get him on. Yeah. yeah. I'm still waiting for me boots. It'll be a four hour, it'll be a four hour episode. He still hasn't sent me the boots. Oh, no, really? Over promise I'd deliver. Yeah, Standard. That's it. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. At Scott V, could Marini become the first factory rider to not score a point all season? This is brilliant. That's a great, yeah. great, great one. Is it? No, so it's never happened. Never not happen. I, I guess suppose. so. Yeah, I've never uh, even. From, I've never probably taken someone notice. that's done a full season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not injury. I mean, yeah, no injuries or no wild yeah. cards. He could. Yeah, he could be. He could be one to. Oh, he would slip into a top fifteen or something. There'd be some. there will be a race that goes down the track where everyone falls well, off. I was going to say everyone falls off and he yeah. stays on. And that's the only way it's going to happen. The, the problem is, is everyone that falls off is on a Honda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah, you're going to be. Yeah, both. Both. Yeah, true. You're right. It's yeah. You're right. The people that fall off are Honda riders, or as you said, one me just says, "Ah, oh, I, I give up and put the <laughs> brake in." He does. I reckon he does. Seventeen laps. Oh, I'll lose a front end. <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> test the airbag out. Yeah. Let me just go watch. He always seems to crash on the lowest speed corner, I swear to God. Like, he never has a big off. It's always a slow Conspiracy, off. Conspiracy, you reckon? He is. I heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I was so shit at the wall out. for our Spotify guys. We should get one of those, like, um, toy ones so you can actually throw it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we kind of read this one, but I'll read his name out anyway. At Petro Snap 
14 will in the uh, replace Binder. And I, yes, I 100% think that should happen. No, I don't think so. I don't, dis- I don't think Bastianini deserves to go onto a factory, the factory team. I think he well, does. I don't think Binder does. Mm. Oh, Binder's... Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're expecting about this, but yeah. At underscore... At Jet underscore Sangster. Mark Marquez will win the 2027 World Championship on a Repsol Honda. Oh, he's going to go back to Repsol. A bit of a fairy tale. Shit ass call. That's a terrible call. Come it's on, Jet. Be, it's not a Repsol ca- Honda anyway. Come on, Jet. Do better. <laughs> yeah, he should have said the Honda factory team. That would have been yeah. more acceptable. Yeah. That, can, sorry, just to go, go away from them. Who is going to want to sponsor them? I told you, us. <laughs> what? We'll give them like six bucks, twenty bucks or something. Yeah, the candy coat. Repsol, like a large doing? pizza and a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> Any chance of a Repsol Ducati? Nah, 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 nah. I don't think so. So mm. where does Repsol go? They're just going to pull a sponsorship for they it. Maybe sponsor like a Grissini or something. Like mm. that you might find them on something else. You reckon? Mm. But they would have gone to Rossini, wouldn't they? With Marquez there already. Would they had that opportunity? I don't know. Because Repsol, correct me if I'm wrong, Rep, Repsol's an oil, yep. yeah. isn't it? Ducati's got Spanish shell. Spanish oil. They got shell. Yeah. They won't do shell. Yeah, yeah. true. And they sponsor the Ferrari. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. It's all t- it all ties in yeah. together. There's, there's won't sponsor anyone. Mm, there you go. That's sad, isn't it? It's very sad. Um, like a lot of hate for Martin. <laughs> <laughs> at yard underscore guitars uh, why doesn't the paddock talk about Oliveira fudging his sister <laughs> oh wait it's, it's a, one of those said things in the pot we're talking about no he's no, talking about the paddock. paddock oh the paddock yeah fuck yeah but they're all envious bro <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that it's the ultimate taboo isn't it far out it's all step mum maybe yeah <laughs> Um, all right, last one. Rui 25, Nick Rewalt. Don't worry about Mark on the factory Ducati. Pedro will be the champion on the factory KDM. Oh, that's too early of a call, I think. That's a great hot take, though. I like it. It is. And he'll fight. I think early doors, you might find him fighting for oh, it. Next year's going to be unbelievable. Next year, I won't be surprised if he's fighting for a world championship. I'm not going to say he wins, but... Yeah, I think there could be definitely fight for it, but... That's probably about as good as it'll go for that first year anyway. Well, we all said, you two, that he wouldn't even get a podium, I think, this year. Oh, I did say that. That's a fucking shit-ass call. Yeah, yeah, you got, called a, it, and man. got a podium in his second, second race? No, third, third race. race. Yeah, pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. That's amazing. He is that X factor that he we is. speak about. Yeah. Once, in ten year, once in every 10 years. He's awesome to watch. Mm. That's it, boys. Beautiful. Done for the hot takes. So, uh, no, yeah, done for the hot takes? Yeah, done with the hot takes. Yeah, I think we're done in general, aren't we? So, Superbikes, Masano? Masano and Le Mans 24 hour. I'm so excited. Oh, Le Mans going to p- be good. 10 p.m. Saturday on Stan Sport if you're interested in oh, watching. Okay, I was going to ask. I know, is. like, i got to sign up for Stan now, CBF, but what is it? Whatever. Cool. Get um, a sponsor. 30, 30%, uh, sorry, 30, 30%. 30-day 30 free trial for Stan as well. So if you want to sign up, you just oh, got to yeah, pay cool. for the sports section. Uh, use um, Motorsport Republic as a code. <laughs> <laughs> Rossi BMW, how's he going to go, you reckon? He's going to win. Oh, that'd be cool. He's going to win. So. That must nice. be a hard gig, though, driving those GT cards because you're just getting out of the way for those... I don't even know what they call them now. The hypercars, is it these days? Yeah, and there's 23 hypercars this year. Is that 23? 23? I remember there was a year there was like in six. There was like two. The one year. There were two. Toyota had two. No, three. Yeah, three. That was it. That was just a battle of the Toyotas. That's wild. They, they, were, in some, they were in some bad... Like it was a really got bad there for a while because it yeah. was amazing with Peugeot and Audi over yeah, the years, the yeah. battle, and then just no one wanted to be in it. Yeah. And then boom, COVID happened. Everyone started spending money on cars. Then all the manufacturers got all this money, and we're back to, back to it. They changed the rules. Yeah, so. it's like a bit of a glory day now of endurance Such racing. A, and it's not like they are based off factory cars to a certain like they look unbelievable, but yeah. they're they're not just production like um, LMP1 anymore. Yeah. It's hyper car, so it's it is a lot better because they look. Like the, it's more cost effective. And the Ferrari in the race looks similar to a Ferrari production car to yeah. a certain yeah. extent. It looks still looks unbelievably different, but like they, they still look like a sweet endurance car. Though. Yeah, yeah. There's a like really it's good could balance. Could be the really best balance. looking car actually. Yeah. Race car. That Ferrari. That does look good. Hyper car is yeah. immaculate. And there's Cadillac this year. There's Porsche. There's is the NASCAR back in it? No, I don't think so. That's oh, that's come back. Well done. Was that, yeah, that, that was, was last year. Oh, was it? Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. 
Uh, and shout out to Gizzy, Shane Van Gisbergen. Yeah, it's on the trot. He won second race, uh, second weekend in a row. The Xfinity? the second NASCAR series, Xfinity series. So, and then Will Brown and Cam Waters uh, didn't do too well in the Cup series this morning. I had a watch of it. Um, Will Brown was third fastest in practice, first time ever in the car, which was oh, wow. unbelievable. I think he finished 30th or something along the lines of that and Cam Waters crashed or blown engine or something. So yeah. so weird seeing those NASCAR race around like a normal circuit. So everyone's leaving V8s is what it looks like? Oh, taste the money, bro. What do you expect? Or, or, I don't blame them, though. Yeah, I know. No, they've, they've come out. Will Brown said to come out and they said it's healthy, like it's good. We're like, we're, I'm not going anywhere. I just want to, you yeah. know, dip, dip my feet in there, but... Yeah, cool. Why wouldn't you? Here we go. Suss it out. Mm. All right, fellas. Let's go eat. Let's yeah, go I'm eat. Starving. See yeah. you. See, See you.